development associations and community development committees, infrastructing the pace of development in this society cannot be overemphasized. This is the reason the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajidi Olushola Sonwolu, is partnering with community leaders in order to achieve the team's agenda of the state government. Today, we shall be looking at what communities are doing differently in order to change the narratives in their areas. I am Made Joke Shoden the Join me, let's see communities in action. The surge of COVID-19 has continued to threaten the existence of man. Countries across the world are doing a lot to stem the tide of the virus, fast changing into a more deadly variant. On February 8, 2021, the World Health Organization reported 376,569 new cases of COVID-19 across the world, summing up 105 million. 805,951 as total confirmed cases and 2,312,278 as total deaths recorded as a result of the virus. On the same day, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control confirmed 643 new cases and 6 deaths. Right from its first case in February 2020 till date, 140,391 cases have been confirmed, 114,635 cases have been discharged, and 1,673 deaths have been recorded in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory, not neglecting the 24,083 on the treatment table at various isolation centers across the country. Lagos State being the epicenter of the virus in Nigeria is not resting on its oars to nip the situation in the bud as more awareness is being created. Governor Babajide Sonwulu has continually charged community development association leaders in the state to intensify the level of awareness of COVID-19 and educate residents of the community on why they should adhere strictly to government directives. The message of our governor to our people is based on the fact that to complement the effort of Mr. Governor and the Ministry of Local Government and Community Affairs, the Lagos State Community Development Advisory Council sprang into action as its chairman, Ala Aji Aziz Amsat, and his team embarked on COVID-19 advocacy tour across major markets in the state to deliver the message of the government to Lagosians. So physical and social distancing. From Suu Lere to Yaba, Lagos Island to Onyibo. The team went round to sensitize residents on the virus. COVID-19 is real. Some people are still doubting that why is it that it has not affected them? Ah, don't wait for it or wait for you to be affected. It is so dangerous. The governor doesn't want his people to be affected. He doesn't want our markets to be closed down. He doesn't want our schools not to be open. He doesn't want uh, our economy to be grounded. So he said we should go out to go and talk to our people in the language they will understand. And that is what has brought us here today. The major things that the government has us to be observing. People are already neglecting it. Many are nonchalant about it. The idea of using the nose mask or face mask is being neglected by many of our people. And it's for our own good. The governor is not happy about it. And he said we should go back to go and tell our people at home that face mask usage is compulsory for everybody. Secondly, the washing of our hands with soap is important. When you go out and you come back, please wash your hands. 
When you go to the toilet, wash your hands. When you do anything, please wash your hands with soap and apply sanitizer so that we will not be infected with the coronavirus. Not only this, the governor advised that any function, any occasion, where you know that many people will gather there, if you can afford, avoid going there, please don't go. Stay in your house. The governor set up local committees in all the local governments in Lagos State. All the local governments and LCTAs. So that if we observe that anybody is sick, all we need to do is to get in touch with the local government, our local government. Just call the chairman of the local government and tell him this is what you observe or that someone is sick within this environment. The local government will send down one of the local committee members and the team or the team as a body to come and test that person at all. They will test the person at all. After the testing, if they discover that the, um, the, the degree of his sickness is very high, he will be moved out of his house to a, an isolation center where he will be treated. Market leaders promise to take the message down to their members and ensure proper compliance of government directives. Amozat and his team members gave satisfactory remarks with the level of response gotten from the market visited. He however expressed optimism that the war against COVID-19 would be won if Lagosians adhere to the state government guidelines to stay safe. I'm so impressed and I believe that it's going to give us a positive result because people too now see the need for that uh, sensitization and they have seen some, some things they've achieved or they have gained. When we got to Surule, the local government, the way they received us, they had to do flyers and everything to sensitize people. It's impressive. I love it and I know it will go a long way. Likewise, when we got to the Oba of Lagos, the same thing happened. He received us with joy and I gave us so many advice on how to go about it. We are now at Oyibo Market. You can see the way the Yaoloja and the Baboloja received us. People came around to listen to what our CDAC chairman has said, which the Lagos State Governor sent us. And they were all happy. And like Mamoja promised, that anybody in the market who is not wearing face masks, obeying all those uh, precautions, will be sanctions. And I know it will, she will definitely do that. So I'm highly impressed for today's outing. It's impressive. We, 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 our city and our city are the real edges of growth.
They are the owners of all our interventions in government. You need to ensure that once we set contractors out, you monitor them and to ensure that they do and deliver quality service so that the schools and the hospitals and the roads that they are building meet the standard that is required of them. Every community needs basic amenities for habitable condition. While some are expectant of government intervention, others are not relenting in helping themselves to help the government. For helping community, you are helping yourself. If you have ability to do things, do it. As community stakeholders continue to contribute their quarter in the development of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Songo Lu is working tirelessly to provide needed infrastructure and amenities while also supporting community initiatives for the benefit of all. Watch Lagos Community Updates on Wednesdays and Saturdays on this channel from 7 to 7.30 p.m. as we bring to your view accounts from various communities across Lagos. Lagos Community Updates, telling the story of your community. That sound isn't just a noise, but reverberation from the peddling of a machine that joins clothing materials from parts to all. All thanks to technology for the innovation of a sewing machine that produces what covers man's nudity and differentiates humans from animals. As speedy as the machine is at work, so is the passion for fashion designing for Funke Oloyede, our community champion for today. From your shoulder and end somewhere around hips. Hello, I'm Funke Oloyede. Welcome to Elan Clothes. Funke, a resident of Bariga community and a member of Akoka Community Development Association in Bariga Local Council Development Area. As a resident in Lagos and the believer of a greater Lagos, she's contributing a quota to the growth and development of our community through youth empowerment. Higher than that 13 inches, otherwise it's going to get uncomfortable. Unless I'm deliberately building a built-up neckline like a bishop neck or a queen Anne's neckline. Let's journey into our world. I was born November 24th, 1990 in Ogomosha. But I grew up in Ibadan, so most of my schooling was done there. I attended first Baptist Nazarene Primary School inside UI. Then I went to do my secondary school at Ipalaba Grammar School. We finally finished it up in Ubumosha. And then for my university, I attended the University of Agriculture, Abelkuta. Now it's now Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta. I studied aquaculture and fisheries management. I was there for five years. I graduated 2011. I served, worked briefly, and then afterwards I decided to go into fashion designing. So I started my fashion training fully 2013, and I did that for about a year. Did internship for like another year before I now fully started my own fashion business. My fashion business started 2015. I've always been in Akoka City since I started my business. My first store, though not air was about two streets over, 2015 December. Yes, that was when we opened the first store, but we moved into this place 2017 April. Education is a pivot towards the actualization of one set goals in life. The search for a lifelong fulfillment of each individual's purpose in life comes from the insight and less dependent on the area of education acquired. For Funke Oloyede, a decision in 2013 to pursue a passion by delving into the fashion world away from a course of study, aquaculture and fisheries management is a blessing to our immediate community and humanity at large. 
over 20 students in Akoka community have benefited from a wealth of knowledge in fashion designing and creativity. If she's a younger person, once I get to her ankle bone, I'm just going to tell her, okay, is it fine there? Just below the ankle bone. If the person says it's fine, so for her, that's 39. You guys, so I'll work with that. But if it's an older generation person that I know that, okay, I've asked the person, I said, oh, I want you to cover part of my shoes. So you want to go all the way to the floor where their feet is ending on the floor, and that's the length you work with for their trouser length. So there are two um, other measurements that we are going to quickly take, and then from there we'll now move to our horizontal measurements. So the first one is your center front measurement. Let me write that down first. You are going to be needing it a lot. CF and CB. So CF is center front. And then your CB, that's your center back. She knows how to teach well. She's a very, very industrious person, very nice person. She has taught me how to sew and draft patterns like she does. As a person, if you have the passion and you come to Miss Funke, she there's no how you would not get what you want as a fashion designer. So to the community, she's going to give in a full best as a fashion designer. You're going to get what you want. She's a nice person, and um, the little that I've learned from her since when I started is she's a good teacher. She gives her mind. She pours it out to us raw, the way it is. And um, she usually tells us with things that we see every day, so that we ourselves, when we get there, we're able to face anything that has to do with dressmaking. She's building new designers in town and um, she's also helping us also to build others because that's the essence of it. Because when she packed the knowledge into us, we go out there and we impact the same thing. She's been an amazing person. She's very selfless. And uh, the little I know about her, she's been able to inspire me, to motivate me academically, career-wise, in short, a lot. She's a very, very amazing person. I call her positive because she's um, very, very positive in the sense that she's helping the school and the youth, let me say, brushing up their skills, how you can use it to make money, how to be a great impact to the society and community at large. Funga has been a great blessing to this community and uh, she's still fashion designing but for the past two years, three years now, she has been training members of the community free of charge. And for me, it's a laudable uh, project that she's doing silently. She's not making noise about it, but I'm sure about uh, uh, 20, 30 people have gone through her, her training just free of charge. She doesn't charge them any, any money. And uh, for me, she, she, she's a silent achiever. Even during the Koro and uh, all these things, uh, many people are not going to school. Some of these university students are not going. And some of them have gone through a, a training, six months training, one year training. And for me, education is not everything. I want to believe that after they finish school, they will use the experience somehow. She's creating job, employment for a lot of people around Akoka and beyond. This is, this is a selfless work that people should, should really encourage. What she is doing is unprecedented because for me, she's a young woman. And uh, for a young woman to get involved and feel that uh, he wants to give uh, back to the community, back to society, I think all of us should applaud her and thank her for what she's doing. She's a wonderful and helpful person in the community. When she started helping us in the community, she called for people who are less privileged that she can help in the community to who are interested really in fashion designing and she started like that she has helped us with um, five levels of graduates the first second and the fifth one this year especially this lockdown that students are at home so many people use this opportunity to be in into a fashion designing and it has really improved their lives. A lot of the people we were training, 
or we are trading right now, when I started, it wasn't really like I had that much capital to start. But thankfully, I had a very supportive family that went above and beyond to be of help, to you know, help me start the business, to fund it in all the ways they could manage to at that point. So I think when I look at, back at some of the things we've achieved, what we've built, how we've been able to help some of the people we've helped, I'm humbled by the privilege to have been able to do it. We have some of the people that we've trained, they've gone on to establish um, businesses of their own. They've started earning incomes from it, and really that's our aim. I feel like the way the society is right now, it might not be the big things that really help the society to effect long-term changes. It's the little thing, so if this person comes, bring what they have to offer, and that person comes, bring what they have to offer, long-term perhaps we'll be able to achieve something. If you look at the way the training has been set up, it's mostly targeted towards women. So our hope is that we'll, uh, um, we'll be able to build a community with more women empowered. There is something I sincerely believe, they, they say that if you educate a woman, you educate her children. So it's our hope that, okay, by the time we have more and more women educated, doing very well for themselves, it's going to long-term impact their children, and then that way, the generations that come after them. No doubt, the success and economic advancement of any nation is dependent on the quality of its skilled labor population. Little wonder, Governor Babajide Olushala Sonwolu made entrepreneurship and skill acquisition by residents of Lagos State one of its cardinal focal point in its themes agenda for a greater Lagos. A community champion for today knows the worth of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs to community growth and stability of a nation in terms of gross domestic product growth and employment creation. It is a good time to be an entrepreneur in Nigeria. There are challenges quite all right, but there's still plenty helping and so to speak. So, but one thing I found out is that a lot of entrepreneurs they're not even aware of the fact that these opportunities are there. So I think the major, the first thing is to even make them aware that these opportunities are there and it's open to you, it's not out of your reach. And then the second thing is to um, make them, is to help them position themselves to be able to take advantage of it. Do you get Because really the people that will give grants will not give grants to random people. They want to make sure that you actually can do something profitable, something sustainable with it. So number one, bringing awareness to them that these opportunities are there and then number two, helping them to package themselves and their business in a way that they'll be able to take advantage of the opportunities. So one thing we've noticed, especially amongst um, the people that are finished, is now they have the scale, but they're still having issues actually starting a business. So yeah, some of them, they're doing it as a side or so, but they are not yet starting a sustainable business with it. So we are hoping that in the coming months, maybe before the end of the year, we would actually be able to um, create like a business startup kind of initiative for them so that we can give them step-by-step -step guideline on actually how to start and structure a business to make it profitable and sustainable. To Funke Oloyede, government across all levels cannot do it alone. It is a moral body and social responsibility on every able individual to impact positively on his or immediate community by using the gifts or knowledge bestowed on them to champion the growth and development of their community. It is not gain saying that the little you do for your next neighbor counts a lot. So I ask you, what is your little contribution to developing your community? Answer that. With that, we wrap up today's episode of Lagos Community Update. Remember, you can always join our social media platforms for comments and suggestions. And in case you have projects or programs in your communities, do call the numbers on your screen. I am Adejoke Shodendi Adinyoju. Till I come your way again next time. <laughs>